Good afternoon and namaskar to all of you. Welcome to the web talk series by UPS School of Modern Media. Today we are indeed privileged to have with us one of the finest journalists of our times, Mr. Bhupendra Chobe. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. Friends, as part of this series today, Mr. Chobe is going to interact with you, answer your questions. But let me, though he does not need any introduction, uh, but it's still my bounden duty to introduce him formally to all of you. I have been fortunate that uh, we have worked together, not as colleagues, but as fellow journalists. And we have even traveled to Pakistan. And uh, Mr. Bhupen Chobe, as I said, is amongst the finest journalists of our times with a career spanning over two decades. We have all seen him bring the biggest stories of our generation in our living rooms. A quintessential old world reporter, editor, anchor. Bhupen has never looked at himself as a studio phenomena, which <laughs> unfortunately is the trend today. He started off his career with NDTV and moved on as one of the founding members of team CNN IBN, which is now known as CNN News 18. He was the host of a very popular news debate show, Viewpoint, which went to win national and international accolades. He has taken a break daily uh, from his te daily te television routine and has already created a mini media startup of sorts. Talk to Hupen has already started trending. Uh, he likes to be known today just as a journalist. But a tech citizen who wishes to scrutinize government data in public domain. It's the new role he has done. So friends, today's topic is future media newsroom and future media classroom. One, we were already thinking of future newsrooms, how they would look like with the advent of internet in a big way. But then Corona came and changed everything. So I think that like you divide history into two parts before Christ and Anno Domini, I think media also would be looked at from two aspects henceforth, BC and AC, before Corona and after Corona. How media was before Corona and how media changed after Corona. Today, you see that print circulations have come down most of the print media have gone online and you see a larger audience shift even from entertainment channels towards news channels. You see a mega shift towards a digital media. People are spending a lot of time on uh, their mobile phones. In this scenario, what does it, in terms of future of media, what does it mean? Uh, we, uh, we have heard about terms like integrated newsroom, convergence, media. I think we need to break it down, simplify it for the benefit of prospective and present media students because they are the future. And in this regard, I would like to now begin my conversation with uh, Mr. Chaube. Mr. Chaube, once again, thank you for joining uh, this conversation. Uh, I would like to begin with a, uh, you know, the first question that comes to uh, my mind is that, uh, as I said, that we hear so much about convergence media and integrated newsroom. How do you think the future newsroom would look like? Well, uh, good afternoon, Professor Suresh, and, uh, and thank you so much for, for having me over. Here, as you rightly pointed out, that you and I have interacted with each other in, in multiple capacities in your earlier tenure as well as in as the director of the Indian Institute of Mass Communication, and now that you're here. So, firstly, my good wishes to you and uh, your entire fraternity of students who I'm sure would be watching 
this webinar broadcast. To your specific question, frankly, the answer to your question, Professor Suresh, is uh, in your question itself. I mean, just look at what we are doing right now. Uh, I'm sitting here. I'm not in Delhi. I'm in Uttarakhand. I'm in the upper reaches of Uttarakhand right now at a very scenic location. And that's one of the reasons why, uh, why I have uh, chosen to take a break right now from television because, frankly, I wanted to be here. But all that you really need to do today to be a part of some kind of an integrated newsroom, what is often described as a convergence of minds, as convergence of applications. You are in Delhi, your students could be in Dehradun, your, your staff, your editors, your, your entire paraphernalia could be in different parts of the country. And yet, without all these people ever coming together in one physical space, you can actually envisage a scenario where you can work. In very simple terms, this is what an integrated newsroom is all about. I would urge your students to look up a, a story which was done on the BBC just a few days back. And it actually told you just how quickly the face of content production had changed. So what had happened was that the reporter who typically would travel with a camera person, uh, with a video journalist to a specific location, the reporter is sitting at one location because the city of London is in lockdown. The camera person is on a different location where the story is unfolding and the camera person is simply in talks, uh, in touch with the reporter via phone. And the editor is sitting on a third location. The person who's putting this whole thing together via what we typically describe as a production control room or imagine in print terms, the, the place where your print product would get printed, he's sitting on a fourth location. Across these four locations, you end up creating a scenario where you create a product and that product simply goes on air. To my mind, that is what technology does. To my mind, that is what Corona pandemic is forcing a lot of people, including the likes of me, to completely reimagine the way we looked at ourselves. I think those days of an individual or the so-called high and mighty anchor going to do a big interview with three OB vans and 10 light men and four or five cameras, I think those days are, are, are very well behind us. Today, I look around myself, and I look, at, uh, I look at whether the Prime Minister himself, who's frankly leading by example and who's doing video conferences after video conferences, to share a joke with you, the All India Congress Committee, which, which meets at regular intervals. This, and there is a whole paraphernalia which goes into the setting up of that, that, that particular political meeting. This time that, that entire AICC meeting was done exactly like this, on a Zoom platform, on Skype platforms. So Congress politicians or my friends were telling me that boss, now what will happen to the entire economic ecosystem which used to exist around facilitation of these meetings. So, you know, somebody would be a beneficiary of organizing train tickets. Somebody, when a chief minister comes or when a senior politician comes from the state, he or she comes with a certain paraphernalia. All that now is a thing of the past. That's exactly what's happening to newsrooms. You may well be in a scenario where you don't require to be what we typically describe as a physical newsroom. The concept of a newsroom itself has changed. And I think as we go along, and we will get into the business part of it in a, in a few moments from now, I'm sure when you raise those questions, the truth is that the requirement of a physical infrastructure for media operations, I think now that is completely a thing of the past. And that in very simple terms is what an integrated newsroom is all about today. You mute, you mute, you mute. Professor, you're mute. You're mute. Thank you, Mr. Chobe, for those. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you are you are um, muted. Because thank you. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. I, can hear you. Uh, I uh, you know, I was just wondering, uh, you know, uh, when you were uh, giving those insights, like we had, we have some channels which have already shifted full time into you know mobile cameras. They are using maximum mobile cameras. They have even launched a vertical. You have NDTV Hawk. Uh, which is a vertical channel. So you have, uh, you know, uh, so many uh, innovations being done. Uh, do you think that, and of course, what you call today citizen journalism or whatever, you know, you have people using mobile phones to, you know, put out stories. Uh, you have a large number of, uh, you know, mobile journalism platforms today. So is mobile journalism going to be the norm in the near future? Firstly, Professor Suresh, let me say this very clearly. I think those days of, uh, of some of us looking at ourselves as, 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 as people 
who were qualified or trained to be a journalist, I think those days are gone. I think every individual around us today is a journalist. Uh, uh, when, when I was with, with, with Network 18, just like the last couple of weeks ago, I would say almost 60 to 70% of our content was driven on the basis of videos which would be public sourced, which would be crowdsourced. So you get a video which you get, let's say, via Facebook stream of some individual or via WhatsApp or via Twitter or wherever, and you see some news value in that, in that video, and you pick that video up and you start playing that video. Who's the person who's supplying you that video? That person, to my mind, is a journalist. Those days of, of a journalist uh, going to the corridors of power and trying to get hold of a story from the corridors of power, and therefore that would qualify to be the definition of conventional journalism. Conventional journalists. I think those days are all gone. Which is why I say that technology is completely changing us. Today, anyone who has a mobile phone, anyone who has the ability of, of simply holding a phone like this and, and, and shooting a nice and stable video, I think qualifies to be a journalist. Let me give you another insight. You know, uh, when I was driving from, from Delhi to Uttarakhand a, a few days back, uh, and this was in peak lockdown period, the state's borders were, were locked up, they were sealed, and you couldn't have crossed from, from one part to the other. But since I had a valid press accreditation card, I had that, uh, that facility to travel. A constable who was guarding the, 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 the borders of Uttarakhand, who recognized me, said, Bupenji, I can I just take you for two minutes? He took me by the side. And he started showing me on his mobile phone various WhatsApp videos, which he had got from his constable friends across the state. Right? And certain videos which he had taken, he said, Dekhi, this is the problem and this is what is happening, this is what is happening. And there in front of me was a person who, perhaps at that point of time, was the number one journalist of the state of Uttarakhand. Because he had videos from each and every region of the state. So he was kind enough to share some videos with me, which I promptly used and I put it up on, on my broadcast that I do uh, across my social media streams. So citizen journalism, backed by crowdsourced journalism, I think is, is the way ahead. And both these forms of journalism is what is brought together when you use the right technology. Today, I would urge your students to be adept and be savvy enough to learn editing techniques on the phone. If you have a good phone, if you have an iPad or any computer device with you, not only can you shoot, you can, you can edit the stuff yourself. Uh, I would uh, urge your students, I'm, I'm just trying to give you various examples so that you know your students can be a beneficiary of this. Try and follow uh, one of my colleagues at Network 18 called Sahil Magdani. Sahil is a young reporter, intrepid reporter. He just passed out of journalism school a few years back. And the way he has used Twitter and social media to simply share information, to simply do reportage, is what quintessential journalism is all about. So he's created a new hashtag called Verified. So everything that comes on his handle, he says is verified because he's got it checked up from where, from various sources. So whether it's in terms of what is the overall toll of people who have died in COVID or people who have been impacted, what are the steps which are being taken by the government, some policy moves, he, he presents it in a bullet point manner, uses a hashtag called verified and simply puts, when he puts up a video, which he has sourced from somewhere, he simply puts his name tag across that video. So that name tag gets a timestamp as well. So I asked him one day, I said, how do you do this? He said, that, sir, all this is here in the phone. This is just an app that you need to know how to use it. You press that app, press that text, and the text will come across your videos. Mobile journalism for you, citizen journalism for you. That is what is the future. Great. Uh, uh, but Bhupin uh, uh, that also brings, uh, you know, uh, certain concerns also. Uh, there are also yes. issues, for example, that come to my mind that, you know, isn't it important for a journalist to be trained in ethics of the profession? Isn't it important for him to be knowing about uh, how to check facts? Uh, a person who is uh, not a journalist uh, in the conventional sense of the term doesn't have access to, you know, certain, uh, you know, say government or uh, the courts, uh, you know, the uh, judiciary, the parliament, the legislature. And then there are issues related to law, the law of the land. Uh, he has to be aware and that is where the role of a media school comes, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, so how do you think that schools like the UPS School of Modern Media can play a role in shaping future journalists? 
Uh, you know. I think that's a that's a very valid question that you raised, Professor Suresh. That uh, in, in in terms of expectations that we as consumers may have, that we as citizens may have, and the kind of facilities or the services which are being offered by schools like the UPS, who I'm sure will go on to do very well in future. I think there is a huge opportunity there for schools like yours to to try and and explain this to your students, to try and convince your students that the only way to becoming a successful journalist, and by the definition of a successful journalist, I mean someone who brings out facts, is if you firstly yourself know those facts. You need to know the background about those facts. Like I'll give you my own example, uh, and now it's become second nature for me. What I do. When when I do so, I do this broadcast called Talk to Bhupen, which is there on my YouTube channel, on my Twitter page, on my Facebook page, on a daily basis at 8 p.m. But we work on that broadcast from 10 a.m. in the morning itself. So I have a full team of people. Uh, we discuss data, we discuss numbers. For instance, if I want to know that if the central government has say promised a help package or a relief package of two lakh crores uh, to deal with this corona epidemic, and if we know that in these next three months. The overall loss, which is being accrued to the central government by loss of GST revenue, is eight lakh crores. So two lakh crore relief package plus eight lakh crore loss in tax revenue. That means ten lakh crores. Now the question is, where are you going to get these ten lakh crores from? So I must be able to figure out how to make a distinction between the claim which is being made by the government and the opportunities which exist for the government to try and and put this money package together. I think. To that extent, the role which is played by media institutes like like yours becomes extremely important because you need to explain to people, you need to make people familiar with what are the kind of platforms, what are the kind of skill sets that you need. If how how do you how do you make sense of government data? You know there is so much of data all around us. I mean, look at uh, how how to make sense of government's press releases. You know, the Home Secretary the other day came under a lot of uh, critique when he when when the, when the when the guidelines were being given for lockdown 2.0 versus lockdown 3.0, and people were saying that you need to be you know MA MPhil to understand exactly what is being stated by the by the Home Secretary. Yes, I think students students like the students of UPS certainly have a great opportunity to learn how to read government data. Uh, you should go on various websites of various government departments. Try and make sense of what is the revenue, what is the expenditure. Only when you understand this gap between revenue expenditure, will you be able to make out this distinction clearly whether the government is giving you an authentic picture or is the government, you know, simply trying to put up a, a rosy, rosy bed. Spe specifically about legal reportage, uh, your students should be aware of this. That if those of you who want to be legal reporters, the Supreme Court has now made it clear that you have to pass a certain exam. Which is conducted by the Bar Council of India, so so that there is there is a certain amount of well legal education and legal literacy that you have, and I think it's a step in the right direction. I think there's far too much time which is spent in conventional media in trying to only and only understand ideological based issues. I think it's very important to try and familiarize one's own self with with data which comes from factual interpretation, Absolutely. which comes from factual understanding. To that extent, I think the courses that UPS has. I think goes a very long way in simply conditioning the mind. <laughs> Absolutely. Fortunately, we have one of the finest law schools in India. Uh, you know, uh, our university has the School of Law. We also have the School of Computer Sciences. Uh, you know, and of course the School of Design. So all these together are going to give, and they are being uh, headed by and led by some of the finest faculty. So they would be able to guide the students on the lines that. You have suggested, Mr. Chobe. That means that data journalism is going to play a very important role in future. Oh yes. So no, no, make no mistake about this. Make no mistake about this. That the, particularly post Corona, and and I say this uh, with a great deal of satisfaction. I think look in any business cycle, in any business, there's always a there's always a turning point. There's an inflection point. I think what happened around 2008 when the Mumbai terrorist strikes happened. That the Mumbai terror strike in was was really the culmination of the kind of attacks which were consistently being mounted against our country by certain vested interests. I think the last decade has been spent in trying to deal with those vested interests, whether they were domestic or foreign. I think this Corona pandemic has, in many ways, set the record absolutely clean. You're back to the starting point. You're back. Uh, you're back to the point where you are literally at a clean slate, and the way forward. 
the first steps can be taken by people who are engaging with data. Uh, I, I, I now look at myself as this individual who's using technology to do scrutiny of data. Every day I spend a lot of time trying to understand exactly what are the commitments which have been made and whether the maths which exists behind those commitments, does the maths match up to those commitments or not? And therefore people are willing to you know, come on. my. Just yesterday I had the OYO chief Ritesh Agarwal uh, on, on my program. Uh, now Ritesh Agarwal is you know, one of the poster boys of, uh, of India's success stories multi-billionaire all at the age of 26, 27. And he told me, he says, Bhupen, I'm so happy that you're trying to fill in this gap because as citizens, as informed citizens, we want to know the reality. You know, we don't want tiltillation. So while a lot of us may get attracted by this tiltillation and a certain brand of sensationalism, which is there, uh, and it has a certain market, I'm not, I'm not denying the fact that it doesn't have a market. But I think the time has also come for people like your students to start thinking in terms of what can be an alternative, what can be a counter to a discourse which is purely based on ideology. That counter can only and only come from data. If you engage yourself in scrutiny of data, I think you'll always be in a very, very good space because the space for data interpretation, data analysis is never going to, is never going to come to an end. Thank you. Very important point there. And uh, uh, Mr. Chaube, uh, I think that uh, in between our discussions, I will start taking questions which have started flowing sure. in from students. Sure, sure. Uh, now, this is a question from Mr. Rahul Dev. Uh, yes. He is asking, sir, can digital marketing and advertising help me to be in mass communication? Oh, yes, absolutely. There's no doubt about that. If you, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the, real, the real success behind any model always is whether you can monetize it. Uh, I think I think if you were if you're a student and who's starting off and if you figure out ways and tools and there's a lot of technology out there. You know, just yesterday I was on a webinar, a similar webinar which was being done by Indian Television uh, uh, dot com, and there was this uh, there was this person from from UTV Networks, UTE Networks. It's, a, yes, it's an America based UTV. company. UTV. Yes. No, not UTV, not 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 the Ronnie Suwala UTV. Okay, I'm talking about a, a UT a T sorry not UTE TVE. TV, okay. uh, T, or TVU network, sorry, it's TVU networks, which is based in America. Okay. And Professor Suresh, what that person told me just completely swept, you know, it, it swept my feet away. Because he gave me a sneak peek into what life for professions like you and me or your students could really look like. He has built a model which is all in cloud, all based in cloud computing, where for as low as $20 per hour, $20 is what, 1400 rupees per hour. For 1400 rupees per hour, he is, has created a model where I will have access to the very best TV studio that comes to your mind because it's all virtual. So you could be sitting in Delhi or in Dehradun or wherever, and you have access to his infrastructure. He gives you a, a, a username and password, which is, which is time bound. You can play graphics, you can play pictures, you can play music. There will be zero difference between a top end TV studio, the facilities which are provided by a top end TV studio and what this person has spoken about. So if you were to be an exponent of digital marketing, if you were to be an exponent of how do, how do these kind of, you know, platforms work, I think you'll be in a very good space going forward. I think, you know, brands like me, brands like, uh, like, like UPS may well depend on digital marketers for solutions, Absolutely. how to reach out to the maximum possible audience. It may not necessarily come through ads in newspapers or TV channels. It may very well come from digital marketers like yourself. Yeah, sure. Uh, in fact, we have digital marketing course also as part of the mass communication program that we are going through. Uh, now, uh, uh, here, uh, there is a question from Ankit Jaiswal, mm -hmm. who is asking, uh, good evening, sir. I wanted to ask a question that our, at present, our media seems to be tilted towards a particular ideology or a thought how to deal with it while applying for a job <laughs> it's a it's a good question so let me uh, let me be blunt with it and now because you know because i don't have any organizational uh, sort of thread on my on my head sort of my head so i can be direct with it if you are chasing a career in conventional media if you're chasing a career in conventional media the possibility of you running into uh, Political opposition, so to say, from the establishment is very, very high. Uh, let me make no bones about it. Uh, but it, it, you know, if you are starting off, uh, is anybody going to stop you from saying what you want to say? 
suppose i suppose if you come to me and i stop you from saying what you want to say you know if i was the editor then what do you do i mean you have youtube channel you have your uh, twitter page you have your facebook page you will still go ahead and you'll say that a lot of organizations today have have uh, have thought of creating social media guidelines i believe where conventional media i think is letting itself down is that its business models have just failed to evolve there is just far too much dependence on the governments of the day for advertising for for revenue support and therefore it is come, not, not that that dependence is not there earlier but i just think that that dependence has increased tremendously now so therefore the space for critiquing the hand which feeds you i think is is rather limited that does not that does not say that if you were to show some bravery that does not say that you will not have the ability you know to uh, to bring out facts i mean you look around yourself at the end of the day fine if the top 2 3 tv channels or top 2 3 publications may not be bringing out facts it's not as if facts are not coming out and that's where social media becomes very important that's where i think platforms like twitter facebook etc become very important i firmly believe the best way to approach the scenario when you're applying for a job is to have your expectations low if you are chasing a career in mainstream conventional media it's going to be a tough road ahead you may still succeed but it will be tough the way to beat that is to identify in your own self some entrepreneurial streak see if you can be an independent journalist on your own i think the i think the stage is uh, the stage is set for for young entrepreneurs frankly you know to take over great uh, uh, mr chobe now there is a question from aryan bandari yeah he wants to know uh, i want to ask about the future of travel shows sure it's a i think it's a it's a very bright future and it's good that your students are asking these questions because it shows that they're already thinking in terms of segmentization of uh, of the media fraternity for far too long you know there was this whole emphasis and premium on whether you're a political journalist uh, if you are a, if you are clo- if you are seen to be close to the politicians who matter that it gives you a certain brand it gives you a certain philip it may give you a certain brand it may give you a certain philip but trust you me Uh, you're not going to be able to make a financially sustainable model only and only by being close to politicians in fact and that brings me back to my earlier answer that you will end up being dependent on the hand frankly that feeds you and your publication i think travel shows is a huge opportunity i would urge you to just go on my youtube channel and and you see the interview which i did with this oyu chief ritesh uh, agarwal just yesterday where he was talking to us about the future of hotel industry you know contact less hotels key less hotels a reception less hotel now if if there was to be someone like you who was to think in terms of putting all this together like a show i think it will be a hugely informative it will be very exciting uh, it will be analytical and it will use technology to tell me the stories right so it will it will it will really be a cut above the rest it will be a niche i would urge all you your your young students today i would urge all of you to try and look for a niche area the world in future is going to be dominated not by the generalists i think that time is gone the world now is going to be dominated by people who are niche oriented so if travel shows is your niche i think you're in a good spot uh, it's it's a damn good uh, uh, place to be in right now uh mr chobe i remember when i was at iimc and you were also uh, you know uh, of my guests during those days uh, i uh, had introduced uh, drones Uh, you know at that time uh, as part of the curriculum mm. uh, but at that time perhaps that was not uh, as relevant as it is today today mm. in a scenario where there is a lockdown and you can't move out much today you see a lot of people using drones and uh, uh, how do you think drones can play uh, you know, not just in terms of you know political reporting or uh, law and order situation but also maybe in uh the far flung areas like uh, uh the situation in vidarbha for example uh you know where where there is farmer suicides or bundel kind you know so uh, do you think drone uh, drone journalism can play uh, an important role i think so i think it's a it's a matter of uh, security guidelines uh, uh, which which will over a period of time i guess be uh, you know uh, get some clarity look at uh, just look at what's happening right now you know and and that's why i keep saying that the world post corona and, and and pre corona is so dramatically and remarkably different because today i'm seeing so many police forces police personnel i'm seeing uh, uh, not media houses yet but certainly corporate houses ngos to try and figure out what is the impact 
of uh, or, or hospitals for that matter what is the impact on people's lives of certain let's say restrictions or the lack of a, a particular facility or the requirement of a particular facility all that is being mapped today by drones uh, i i remember clearly before this corona pandemic happened there was a big israeli firm and they wanted to get into a tie up about civil aviation ministry had raised some concerns where something as basic as delivering a pizza to your place could have been done by a drone uh so so it's it, it's just a matter of time i think it's just a matter of time uh, if you are adept with the technology of controlling a drone i think that you you will see that you will again be a niche oriented space let me also point out because not everybody of your students would be interested purely in news in the world of fiction and i spent a lot of my time with top filmmakers across the country as well i tell you the the kind of experimentation which is right now being done with drones is fascinating i mean between steady cams where you simply tie up a camera on your body and you walk so if you you know if you've seen extraction or any of these fancy netflix and amazon kind of shows you will see that it's a beautiful view that you get where a person is literally walking into the camera that person who's walking to the camera is actually walking into a camera because there's someone who's wearing a camera in front of him and he's going backwards and the person is moving forwards and that's how you get that shot similarly in drone photography in drone based journalism this is uh, this this is a this is a great space to be in and i anticipate that as more and more digital streams you know as more and more as more conventional media moves digitally i think the dependence on drones will will also be that much higher today you get a if you go to the dubai airport you can actually purchase a drone for as this is 700 bucks uh, <laughs> i myself have a drone i might have a drone camera i sometimes play around here with, with my kids <laughs> it goes up to a height of roughly 30 feet uh you can fly it at 30 feet uh it has a video recording device it has an audio recording device it has a visual recording device you can take pictures you can take audio video and it's perfect this is here so certainly and certainly the ups that, school that, of modern media we are going to have many of them <laughs> very nice very nice very nice uh, mr chobe uh, there are also some questions because we have always been uh, you know in our uh, journalism schools uh, we learned and we taught also that journalism and public relation share a symbiotic relationship you know uh, the pr personnel needs the uh, journalist uh, for his publicity and we need them for information for example every day you have the pib coming out with rela- information related to all the developments in the country so the pib organizes the 4 pm press conference you know? so uh, this is obviously government public relation you know we are dealing with the same holds true for you know state governments also so here is a question from mansi more who wants to know sir i want to ask about the pr department in journalism can you tell me more about it and uh, related to this is a question from sonal parmar which says what exactly is the role of media managers in a media industry that's a media managers in a media industry sonal is a is is a double edged sword so media management can be a negative word media management can be a positive word media managers are people you know who sometimes get associated with political parties or uh, with government departments of the day just to ensure that the right kind of information is passed on to the media houses today again largely because of the advent of social media because of twitter and facebook and all these kind of platforms the dependence on social media platforms to disseminate information is very high as far as uh, as far as all these government departments is concerned so they do end up hiring people they do end up hiring teams and there are a lot of uh, you know new entrepreneurs who have now all sprung up uh, and they create these small teams of, of four and five people who sit in different parts of the country and their brief is to amplify the tweets amplify the messaging which comes from an individual in the government or comes from a particular uh, a particular arm of the government so the the earlier question which was being raised on on the existence of pr machinery within the government and how to go about that well uh, there is doordarshan uh, there is all india radio uh, there is the press information bureau every state in this country has uh, has a, has an audio visual publicity department so what you can do is that uh, you can think in terms of uh, applying for a job there though in states i see that when it comes to the the information broadcasting department in states there is a dependence sometimes on on the bureaucracy so there is a india information services if you feel like uh, when appearing for that exam if you have the requisite qualifications they require a a, a graduate degree 
uh, you can appear for for that exam and you can straight away you know you can you can join doordarshan a colleague of mine who used to work as the head of my research team in my channel is today the director of uh, of doordarshan news director of doordarshan in haryana and he's looking at the entire state of haryana as news director of doordarshan which is which is fascinating because he managed to clear the the entrance examination for indian information services uh mr chobe uh, one question that comes to my mind is is being active on social media good enough to be a journalist what is the importance of hands on training again if i was to say if i was to say that uh, that no training is required while on one hand i say that everyone around us is a journalist because everyone around us has a story to tell but if you see yourself as the quintessential journalist if you see yourself as a conventional journalist then i think first and foremost you must know the facts secondly you must have access to people who can help you with the facts you know professor suresh and i uh, have worked extensively for many years i'll share a story of mine with you uh, when i joined ndtv uh, and i was you know i was in my infancy in those days and we didn't have access to mobile phones the way we have now so every time you'd go on a shoot you would get told you would be given a mobile phone by 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 the news channel by the news station which you were supposed to return at the end of the day now whoever you go and meet would ask for a number where the person could call you now if you don't have a number of your own and you know, if you don't have a number of your own then then you know then how do you deal with that person so the first challenge we had was how to get the confidence out of the individual concerned that please give me your number so that i can call you when i want to call you because if i have to give you my number i will end up giving you only my landline number which is at home you know and my mobile number changes every day so how am i going to be in a position in which i can i can speak to you when the first time i remember prime minister vajpayee was the prime minister there and there was a press conference which had to be done at the bjp headquarters and my then editors told me that you have to go and you have to cover the press conference and i felt very excited because that was the first time i'd have gone to the bjp headquarters i realized i actually didn't know the address so my challenge was that how do i find the address so and i was too embarrassed you know to ask any colleague of mine because uh, in ndtv i mean these are all big prime donors at that point of time so i actually dialed 198 which at that time was the ask me service uh and i dialed the number and i asked them that uh, you know i need to know the address of this place so then i got the address of the place and that's how i ended up going <laughs> to the place so now of course now of course the, the world has changed you know, the world has changed and everything is available on google and you can find everything on siri but uh, but i would urge you i would urge you to read read reading gets you the best possible training nothing gives you the kind of training which reading does Uh, uh mr chobe you have been going to i mean as uh, you know you were holding a very important position in news asia and uh, you have obviously been part of the hiring process also and uh, when you look at a prospective candidate uh what exactly do you look in a candidate you know when he comes for a job uh, you know even now you have your own startup so when you look for hiring people what exactly do you look for that you know this is the kind of these are the qualities i should have uh, you know in 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 my team member you know uh, if you can just talk about that sure uh, i look out for two things one is just how much does that person read and that's what i was saying uh, i'll give you my example even though now there are no newspapers these days but i get pdf files are on the internet i every day read four hindi newspapers i read uh, three english newspapers and i without fail i read two or three regional newspapers uh, unless i know what is happening in states of the country if someone wants to have a conversation with me in terms of what's happening in jharkhand what's happening in chatisgarh i would have a broad picture of what's happening there and it's only an own, when i say that i'm a i'm a reporter editor i say this with a certain degree of pride because what has unfortunately happened with our profession is that there is just far too much dependence on what is happening on twitter what is happening on facebook twitter and facebook i look at it as amplification platforms i look at them as loudspeakers i don't look at them as primary sources of information if i treat them as primary source of information i'll end up being stuck in this cycle of fake news which everyone speaks about because there's no authenticity which is associated with it so while i may look at this as a platform which gives me a lead i will know whether it is right or wrong only and only if i have some basic background there some basic backgrounding you know about about that particular state or about that particular issue that, that's why i believe that to to all your students it's very very important that uh, that you know that you read so reading is the first part 
uh, and second is that journalism is the one business the one vocation which really tests you it tests you on a daily basis uh, the gains will come but the gains will come after a very very long shelf life after a very long shelf life uh, and, and uh, you know I'll, I'll again share an example with you all uh, uh, a very bright colleague of mine very dear friend of mine who's still there uh, with our network uh, she started off her career and uh, you know she came from from a different state she came from bihar she had absolutely no clue about what delhi was and when she came in uh, i i i would take her around to parliament and here and there and i'd introduce her to people and and today i see i take it with a, with a great deal of pride that she has made a conscious attempt to try and position herself exactly the way i used to position myself in the in the initial phases of my career which is to read because she reads because she over that reading and some level of intelligence she builds up some access and she's patient so reading and patience are two clear cut virtues that i look for uh, when i be hiring anyone absolutely uh, and somebody is really inspired and uh, has asked me you know this question that uh, uh, this is uh, an anonymous person anonymous attendee who has said that how do i become sure. a journalist like you <laughs> well uh, uh, somebody you, wants you to you already are like me <laughs> you're already like you're already like me there is nothing uh, there's nothing unique about me the only thing which is unique about me i feel is that uh, is that i like to keep my feet on the ground uh, in in while i'm while i'm on a mountain peak right now uh, but but in our business you know when the cameras are on you uh, some of us end up losing our our foresight and losing our bearings and i think it's very very important Uh, I was in the morning. I was in a conversation with Aditya Ghosh, the former CEO of Indigo, who is also now with with Oyo, and and Aditya was holding forth on this on uh, this ability of being humble, of humility, and taking criticism in the right direction. So you know, I'll I'll answer your question, uh, Professor Suresh, by giving an example which Aditya gave me, and I think it will help your students. So Aditya Ghosh was was a person who was a lawyer, and then from a lawyer, he ended up becoming the CEO of Indigo Airlines, which is one of the world's biggest airlines now. He was a young chap, and while everything was going right for him, uh, an incident happened about his airline, which ended up creating a huge question mark. Where uh, a, a staffer of Indigo ended up getting into a fisty cuff with one of the passengers, and it really brought yes. negative press and you know bad press against Indigo. You had viral videos. So I was asking, how do we deal with that situation? It went, yeah, 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 yeah. It went viral. So he gave me a very good answer to that. He told me that for the longest time, we thought that. I mean, you know, why, why, why is this happening to us? This guy must have some problems. It must be some individual case, this and that. And then he said that actually we were raising the wrong question. Instead of why, we should have looked at what. We should have looked at what was being stated by the person, rather than why was the person stating that. As long as you don't know why question, you are sitting on your high horses. As long as you are on what is being stated, what is the criticism, that is when you start looking for answers. So. if you want to be like me first things first always listen to your seniors have faith in your seniors always be patient and see always look for the what not for the why if you look for the why you will be in a not be in a comfortable scenario i know you know in your schools you will you will you will read about these five w's of journalism but this is a post corona world Absolutely. and this post corona world the one w that matters the most is what as long Absolutely. as you focus on what you will be in a good space great take away uh, uh friends uh, you know we just have 40 more minutes to go please keep sending your questions uh, so that mr chobe would be able to answer uh, now uh, here comes a question from divyansh verma uh, mr chobe yeah, uh, yeah it's yeah, uh, a good evening sir how is the future of automobile journalism what can i do to become an automobile uh journalist i mean something like special the the auto auto journalism space much like uh, much like uh, the travel journalism space that we were talking about again is a is a niche space it's a it's a good space to be in uh, as long as you know about automobiles as long as you know about the engineering process which is associated with automobiles as long as you know that this is something which uh, which 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 you can handle 
See, any you must always remember this, and I say this to all your students, Professor Suresh. There is a surfeit of journalists out there. The world outside there is full of journalists, right? And there is a surface of news platform. You have to always ask yourself, what is it that defines you? What is it that you must do to put yourself in a niche area? If if becoming an auto journalist is is what inspires you, then you must make an attempt to read about automobiles, and you must make an attempt to figure out what's the difference between a vehicle A and a vehicle B. What is the kind of you know preferences that people have? You learn about the the industry bodies, the business associated with it, the engineering associated with it, and then you will see that you will be in a good space. So, whatever you do, don't think in terms of just being a generalist. The space of being a general based you know staff wire copy reporter is over. Uh, what you bring to the table is what you really need to focus on. Absolutely. Uh, now that brings me to a very important question, Mr. Chobe. You have been repeatedly saying that you know the the days of the generalists are over. You know. So uh, I, I'm sure that you have visited many media schools. What is that that thing that you find lacking in the curriculum or missing? In the media, uh, where you feel that they are still churning out generalists and not, uh, you know, uh, journalists uh, who are who can produce you specialized niche content, you know. So, uh, what is it that is lacking in media schools today? Which I think, I think, I think, I, I, yeah, yeah, I think a, a modern media sure school should you, have, yeah. You you are in a you're in a very good space, and I think you're the right person, you know, who can make this distinction because you looked at the journey from the other side uh, of the desk as well. I think what is often missing from, uh, from the present day media schools is there's just far too much emphasis in terms of equipping your students with tools which will simply give them a job. I think that that, that barrier of, of journalists going to a school to get a job, I think that needs to be broken in some way. That needs to be segregated. Yes, we need a job. Yes, we need money. Journalism is business, all that is very well. But the starting point of a journalist's journey cannot be a job. If the starting point of a journalist's journey is how do I get more money, then you will never be able to do justice to your profession. The, the, that, the question of money should be the second question in, in your life. When I started off my career, my first pay packet was 7,000 rupees. Uh, and 7,000 rupees was, was to me, my mind two decades back was a lot of money. And, uh, and, and, and I, never, I never questioned as to why was I being given less, was I being given more. Uh, I kept on you know, moving up the ladder and I am where I am today. And God has been kind and I've got good wishes from all our friends like Professor Suresh. But don't think of acquiring tools which will get you a job. Think of acquiring tools while you're in school where you can do experiments which you will not get to make when you get into a commercial working space. That I think is a fundamental mistake, which is sometimes made by journalism schools. I would urge you to expose your students to new age media realities. I would urge you to expose your students to new age apps like this, you know, this TV network that I've spoken about. Expose them to the production part of, 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 of news generation. Expose them to what are the, the technologies which are at play today. Expose them to what is it that you need to do to be better aware of data. It's only when you blend data and technology together will you be in a position in which I think that you will be able to, you know, stand away, stand apart uh, as a niche-based product, as a niche-based entity. Okay, uh, Mr. Chobe, uh, I am told by my team that you have some other meeting coming up, uh, but uh, uh, yeah. let me at least try to answer as many, you know, questions questions as possible. So uh, let me come for quick, uh, you know, let me go for a rapid fire of questions from the students so that you can quickly respond to them. Uh, you know, so maybe in another 15 sure. minutes or so we can go for, uh, you know, uh, sure. yes. Sure. Uh, now, uh, uh, there is a question from Anuj Jain. Uh, Anuj Jain is asking, do you suppose journalism will hire engineers, data scientists, drone managers, computer tech Technologies in future? I think so. I think uh, I, I think the space for technology is is vast uh, and and it's open for uh, and it's open for all. I think the the faster we in conventional media we understand this, that the future ahead is only in two, two areas. One, as I said, you can't be a journalist. B, you must know about technology, and C, you should be aware of data. Well, if you are aware of data, you'll never be a journalist. 
And if you're aware of technology, then you'll ever always be, you know, in, in a good space. I mean, to make this distinction between drone-based journalism or other forms of journalism, social media-based journalism, uh, I, I was I was just uh, on a phone call with uh, with someone on Twitter right now, and I myself am going in for a workshop, or to be conducted by Twitter, where I'll be I'll be learning about you know how how can you leverage these platforms a little more, or how can you benefit from these platforms a little more. So there is a lot of a uh, lot of learning I think which needs to be done for all of us, including me. The world is changing. You must understand this. The world is changing, if not already changed. Technology is. The, the basic wall work today of our profession and we must be we must be on top of the game uh, mr chobe uh, you know uh, because we are also in our school planning to introduce ai now uh, you know how do you think artificial uh, intelligence can aid future journalists hmm. I, I think i think artificial journalism uh, artificial intelligence is uh, is also a very interesting space to be in if you look at a platform like Daily Hunt, for instance, which is a content aggregator or news in shorts. So it doesn't matter whether the content being produced is being produced by Bhupendra Chaube or being produced by Professor Suresh or any one of your students. What it does is simply places your content on an algorithm. It places on an algorithm. The algorithm then determines the reach of your content in terms of an engagement. And then on the basis of the engagement of that content, that algorithm simply fits it into various genres. So those days of an editor sitting on a table and thinking that you're a sports journalist, you're an entertainment journalist, you're a political journalist, those are all gone. It's all being, you know, now being taken over by, 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 by algorithms. And I suspect as we move deeper into this post-COVID world, I think the dependence on technology, the dependence on these kind of platforms will be that much more higher. Uh, so, so again, you know, it's, I think it's, it's fascinating that we're even thinking of these terms, thinking of these lines. Because it shows that your students are aware of what are the challenges. The first step towards finding a solution is to identify what's the question. And as long as you know the question, which is in terms of technology, I think it'll be in a good space. Uh, Mr. Chobe, uh, you know, uh, in the wake of Corona positive, we have seen a lot of importance being given to public health communication. Now, mm. till now, it was part of development communication. You see public health reporting playing a very important role in the coming days. I, I think, uh, I think you know, what I would say that instead of just public health, I would say public health, which is based on facts. Uh, people need to know exactly what is the reality. So there are all kinds of data, there are all kinds of graphics which are all around us these days. If you follow Shamika Ravi from Brookings Institution, she's giving one set of data. You follow Sujit Palla, he's giving a different set of data. And, you know, I mean, all, all kinds of, I mean, I myself am putting in my, my own stuff, India spends, all kinds of platforms are out there. I think public health is going to be an exceedingly important space to be in, provided you know about this space. You should know which state, for instance, has the least, you know, uh, has, has the least, uh, uh, let's say, money expenditure when it comes to, when it comes to, uh, uh, to health. Uh, which state is, is, is really uh, spending, you know, the, the, the least amount of money in, in, in health environment, which state is, is spending the maximum uh, uh, money in health infrastructure. Unless you know about these things, you know, uh, there's no point of thinking in terms of being a health health healthcare journalist. Okay, uh, there's a question from Nishi Shah. Uh, what will be the future of advertising industry? Future of advertising industry, I think, is a is 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 a, is, is is an interesting is an interesting place to be in, Professor Suresh. I think that what will happen. I think that what will happen, okay, Professor Suresh has left, but, uh, I, but I think that what will happen, just to finish off that question, is that the advertising industry will also have to adapt itself to these new age uh, rules, to these new age uh, platforms. And uh, it, these new age platforms is what will enable you uh, via technology, is what will enable you, frankly, you know, to, uh, to figure out what should be the best possible option to sell a particular brand, uh, the same arguments which are applicable when it comes to when it comes to journalism are the arguments uh, uh, which are applicable when it comes to advertising. So, so I think that that's a fantastic, uh, fantastic position to be in. Yeah, uh, is the I think Professor Suresh, I'm uh, I'm I'm losing you, Professor Suresh. I think there's a there's an internet connection problem. So let me leave it there. Yeah, I, 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 no, 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 no. Hello. 
हाँ बिकॉज आई लॉस्ट यू सुरेश पढ़िए you must uh, you must make an attempt to get to know of world affairs um, get to know strategic affairs get to know you know you should read a bit about what's happening in china i think the collapse of china the suspicion of china today i think is a fantastic space to explore and given that there is such a huge economic and and social history which is associated with china i think it's uh, it's fascinating if someone can frankly do some deep thinking and deep analysis around what awaits china post this covid world i think it's a it's again it's a very good space to be in Uh, there's a question from pm narayanan and he is asking and i i believe he is also a well known journalist from delhi uh, he is with a german radio uh, he has asked what do you think about popular journalists like you becoming a brand in itself in news journalism uh thanks very much uh, for 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 saying such you know warm words and kind words but let me say this to you that to become a brand in journalism uh, and at my level Uh, it takes a lot of a uh, lot of hard work uh, there is a, there are a lot of sacrifices that i have made and it's only on the basis of those sacrifices that i have made over these last two decades that i am in a position in which today i can say that look i did not want to be in delhi i did not want to be you know to be surrounded with these kind of life threatening risks as many of my very brave colleagues uh, are, are surrounded with uh, and and i just want i wanted to contribute to 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 data i want to contribute to a new form of storytelling uh, and i can do that sitting here in bhimtal only and only because of the amount of phenomenal very very satisfying work that i have done over these last two decades so thank uh, you before i much. ask you to conclude uh, you know because i know you have to uh, go for another meeting no, my uh, battery a, my battery is also dying out actually yeah, that's why there's a there's a device. question from a, a girl uh, student uh, apparently Uh, she is saying sure. do you personally feel that journalism is as open to girls as it is to boys obviously we live in a society where discrimination on gender is much evident so according to you is there any gap between girls and boys in this field i take great pride to say this that if there is one business if there is one profession there is one profession where i think uh, 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 you know women would perhaps be getting super seedings today uh, where they would be getting more importance today i would say it would be the world of journalism uh, we are the society that we are uh, those gender biases which exist those biases are there i i fully accept that and acknowledge that but it's uh, but it's an open secret that certainly in 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 broadcast media for instance uh, look at look at look at all mainstream channels look at all mainstream channels and look at how you know whether it's english or hindi there are a lot of uh, very bright young women who all made it to the top from ndtv to our network to times now to you know to uh, to news 24 to uh, to z news to vion news i mean palki who is now with vion news look at the phenomenal work that she's doing uh, and she was with us so you know it gives me great satisfaction so don't be afraid don't be don't be worried you should only and only worry about one things one thing which is that how much do you know what are the facts do you know as long as you know the facts as long as you're someone who can do the data crunching which is very important i think you're always in a very good space i know uh, mr chobe i am receiving so many questions that you know it will not take less than one more hour to you know answer them but i'll uh, come on another time i'll come on another so time i look Maybe forward to you know a more session with you but uh, lastly you know uh, if you can just uh, answer one or two questions from our side because students yeah. these days are using when it comes to language you find a lot of them you know using twitter language you know and uh, now that is impacting whether it is not just english hindi you see people one complain is that people are no more using appropriate language people are no more using good english good hindi for that matter so how important are language and articulation uh you know both in terms of spoken and written for media students 
I think it's very important. Uh, uh, one thing which you must not do is to allow tools to get the better of you. You have to master the tools. The tools should not get the better of you. Uh, I, I, I belong to Banaras. I come from UP. Uh, and I take great pride, again, in the fact that uh, I have worked over the years to ensure that my Hindi is as good. My Hindi is as good as my Hindi is as good. अगर मैं आपसे हिंदी में बात करूं तो मैं एकदम उसी अंदाज में और उसी शैली में बात करूंगा जैसे मैं अंग्रेजी में करता हूं बल्कि बहुत बार मुझको तो मेरे मित्रों ने यह बताया है कि जब मैं हिंदी में बात करना शुरू करता हूं तो मेरी हिंदी बहुत संस्कृत से प्रभावित से दिखती है और वो इसलिए है क्योंकि मैं बाजारू भाषा का प्रयोग नहीं करता मैं बाजार में हूं लेकिन उसका यह अर्थ नहीं है कि हम भाषा को बाजारू बना दें भाषा हम भाषा भाषा हमारे लिए भाषा हमारे लिए एक ऐसा तंत्र है जिसके जरिए हम अपनी बात हम अपना संदेश जनता तक पहुंचा सकते हैं उस तंत्र को हमें बर्बाद नहीं करना चाहिए चाहे हम ट्विटर पे हैं फेसबुक पे हैं जहां भी हैं अगर आप हिंदी में बात करना चाहते हैं आप हिंदी में बात करिए इफ यू वांट टू स्पीक इन इंग्लिश यू स्पीक इन कंट्रोल बना के रखें तो ही आप लोगों को जीवन में आगे चलके उसका वाकई लाभ मिलेगा। And at UPS also, Mr. Chobe, I must inform you the uh, that we are going to have a language lab wherein we would Very be, good. you know, uh, talking about diction, uh, language, and you know, and there is this MTI factor, the mother tongue influence. So we are going to talk about those issues also. And uh, last good. but not the least, you know, there are the students who wish to go for print media. Some who wish to go for electronic media, but in this era, how important is for all these students to study modern media? I think it's important to study modern media as well because modern media is what is going to be the media of the future. Uh, make no mistake about it. You look at global instances, the maximum amount of investments which are being made, whether you're New York Times or CNN International or Fox, is all happening on digital platforms. You need to know about technology. You need to know about what is happening in in course of uh, in course of the new age storytelling tools. And it's only when you know about these these new technologies and these new age storytelling tools that will you be able to do justice to all these kind of platforms. So I wish all the very best to all your Thank students. Thank you so much. Suresh. And can Thank you, you so give much. some last few tips? To so my last few tips. To you know, for my, 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 my my last tip is that well, whenever you come to a public engagement, you must have a a, a, a battery bank with you because I don't have a battery bank right now on my device. <laughs> just about to die out. Uh, that's tip number one. But tip number two, as I said, read. Please read. Read as much as you can. Read the language-based press. It will give you an understanding of what is happening Absolutely. to our country. And and try and be on the side of fact. Try and be as much data you know. Try and focus on that. You'll always be in a good space. Thank you, Mr. Person. Chobe. It has been one of the All finest the engagements we have had. And we look forward you to your much. continued association. Now that you have shifted to Uttarakhand, we are also in Uttarakhand. We look forward to your guiding our students in the coming days also. Thank you Thank so you much. much. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All the way best. All the way best. So there uh, we are. Uh, we have got uh, several questions. Uh, friends, let me try to answer some of the questions. And in future, we will certainly be uh, you know, try to get Mr. Chobe, uh, you know, now, uh, well, one answer, I wish I could have uh, asked um, the hard work that, uh, well, if you want to become someone like Bupen Chobe, you need to put in, you need to work that extra uh, hour, you need to walk that extra mile, All right? Then there's a question from, uh, uh, this was uh, about Mr. Deepak Kumar Tyagi is asking, what is the future of TV broadcast news, advertisement industries, during COVID-19. Well, broadcast media, as I said, television industry, uh, in terms of audience, yes, there is an increased enhanced audience is there. But uh, the fact remains that in terms of revenue, the advertisements have declined. One hopes that as the economy recovers, uh, there will be more advertisements. And also we should come to the, the viewer paying the, that model has to come into play, wherein we will be paying for quality media. Uh, then you have uh, anonymous attendee. I mean, things to be mentally prepared for before choosing news journalism as a career. Well, uh, it's, quite, it's, a, it's an exciting profession. Uh, you know, it's thrilling. Uh, overnight, you can be asked to cover anything. You can be sent anywhere. That is a thrill. But if you're expecting a normal routine kind of a 10 to 6 kind of a job, that's not happening. 
in media uh, where you know you really are working 24 into 7 into 365 you will have your holidays you will have your weekends but not when you have a big news breaking at that time there is no holiday you will have to in a situation like corona you have no holidays you have to work because your job is to provide information and educate the public at large so it is uh, certainly very exciting profession and uh, then there is a question of is social media this is from jain is the presence of social media decreasing the value of journalism well no uh, on the contrary i believe that uh, people are now fed up with uh, uh, you know fake forwards fake content so much so that you all would have seen now in the last since monday i am seeing this uh, advertisements uh, by tiktok wherein varun kohli uh, you know virat kohli and some uh, film stars Ta tapsi pannu and all those film stars are coming and they are now talking about mat karo forward you know so a lot of stuff uh, you know divisive stuff a lot of fake stuff is being circulated on social media so people have started realizing they have started realizing the value of uh, credibility so they are looking for credible media they have realized that social media is uh, now uh, whatsapp has also come out with a, a bots operated system wherein you can uh, do some fact checking uh, you know that has become a big menace that needs to be uh, no now hisham isar is asking about sir is media free from biasness well media's job is to be objective and to be accurate and they have to be factual unfortunately due to as mr jobe mentioned uh, because of financial reasons uh, because of other reasons uh, you know uh, a, a certain amount of bias has come to be identified with some media houses which is certainly not in the interest of the uh, audience in the interest of the viewers uh, but uh, uh, i think that as the people become more educated more enlightened uh, you will see much more responsible media because otherwise people will not accept them uh, so i think that answers his other question also why are journalists biased these days well then there is pulkit who is asking do you see different versions of indian media where there is ravish kumar uh, there is uh, arnab goswami and sudhir chaudhary well uh, pulkit you know uh, a journalist is neither supposed to be uh, pro government or anti government he has to be you know pro people so if the government is doing something good then he has to support and if the government is doing something anti people then he or she has to oppose so a uh, journalist uh, should not uh, become as i often say in hindi that patrakar ko pakshkar nahi banna chahiye he should be objective he should be neither be opposing everything that the government does or supporting everything that the government does he has to look at the merits uh, on on issues not based on ideology he may have a political leaning or an ideological leaning but his voting preference should not reflect in his reporting uh, that's what i believe uh, now uh, what are the things we have to develop to become a journalist well as i as he rightly pointed out you have to be patient you have to be hard working you have to be studious you have to read a lot uh, uh, even television anchoring is not a glamorous job the way it looks like a lot of hours all these lead anchors put in before they come to the studios so you need to understand uh, well i think that what will be the what are the various areas we can work under if you pursue journalism except for news well you, uh, i mean then it would become entertainment uh, in news itself there are so many areas you know lifestyle journalism is there you can follow lifestyle you can follow automobile as somebody asked you can pursue travel journalism you know uh, you can uh, pursue uh, agriculture rural areas uh, you name it there is uh, sports uh, business so it's not necessary that you should always be only be pursuing political and ideology which is seen to be overwhelming but apparently that's not the case uh, you know it depends on you in fact there is a dearth of talent in these areas because everybody seems to be interested only in politics i think that we need a lot of journalists 
who can and uh, believe me uh, at ups school of modern media we are going to focus on many other areas other than political journalism also so you are most welcome to be on board uh, well uh, i have i think uh, tried to answer uh, what are the pros and cons of pr department well public relation is a profession which is not which is certainly you know hard you need to be hard working but it's not uh, you know uh, as uh, rigorous as journalism but yes in public relation department you will be looking after the interest there is an apparent bias obviously it's not pursuit of truth or objectivity you are defending your employer you have to promote him you have to project him so uh, so it's not exactly journalism but at the same time it is about projection it is about writing about them it involves a lot of writing it involves all the attributes of a journalist minus uh, you know objectivity you would be subjective you would be looking purely from the interests of your business uh, of your industry that's what you would be looking at uh, yes mm, well you don't need any experience when we are thinking of becoming journalists this is uh, somebody is asking what experience we have to have Uh, when we are thinking of you need no no experience you just come over to our school we will have a round of q and a or an interactive session or an entrance test and uh, if you are able to clear what we would be looking forward is that you should have good language skills uh, you should have a good understand general knowledge and general awareness and of course a passion for journalism that's the only thing the three qualities that we would be looking for in a in a in a prospective uh, journalist uh, um, well i think that uh, most of the questions uh, which have uh, you know uh, which have been raised by students have been friends somebody has asked me about the courses uh, well i have already in digital marketing and uh, advertising well you know things are changing today and post corona it is going to be a lot more dependent even education is now you know uh, going to be uh, e centric so e learning is going to be the uh, future so uh, similarly when it whether it is marketing advertising a lot of emphasis is on uh, online and i think that that's where our uh, forte is also going to be the school of modern media is going to teach you technologies that would even prepare you groom you for a situation where you can work from home prepare everything at home and you can you know work for the best of companies internationally that's what we would be looking at uh, uh, uh divyansh verma is asking i want to ask humne bahut sare job losses dekhe hain in media industry so there are any opportunities for those people and new candidates also i think after covid very tough well divyansh i i have a different take on this i believe that you know uh, it's important uh, that yes some people due to and it's not just confined to uh, media uh, uh, all sectors have been impacted and media is part of that uh, you know some people have lost their job some have been spent sent on uh, paid leave but that does not mean that you know that is the end of the world uh, you know uh, they will be getting once the situation improves Uh, they will get, uh, but it all depends on you. You know, how much are you skilled? Uh, if you are so skilled, if you are a specialist, as Mr. Chobe said, that if you are a generalist, then you can be replaced by anybody. You know, but if you are a, a specialist in your area, in your domain, say uh, agriculture, say automobile, say uh, you know films. If you are uh, the biggest or uh, gadgets, suppose. you are somebody you are among the handful of people who know the industry very well then uh, obviously you know uh, your demand will always be there nobody can replace you so i think you should also strive this is the area of multi and super specialization you should look at uh, you know becoming a specialist rather than a generalist uh, most of the people who lost their jobs are generalists you know uh, who could be replaced by somebody who is cheaper who is younger Uh, i think that uh, for any industry it's innovation it's creativity how creative you are how uh, skilled you are how much have you uh, you know adapted to new technologies you know when we started i call myself you know that uh, i belong to the before covid era generation of journalists 
we did not have we used to work on typewriters you know i used to write copies i still remember uh, with pen and the paper uh, times have changed uh, you know i have also shifted today i am talking to you on uh, a zoom platform because i realized that if i need to survive in this industry i have to you know shift to the new technologies so whoever you know it's a struggle for survival and the survival of the fittest as uh, darwin put it you know it's a darwinian theory at work so if you so you got to be the fittest you know that's going to be the norm in any industry not just media uh, that's what i believe uh, yes and then uh, we have uh, yeah uh, there is a thank you that clarified all uh, yes uh, expecting more well we also look forward to and uh, next time we are planning uh, something we have had two webinars related to journalism so since we are seeing so many questions related to advertising and public relations i think that the the, the next web talk or webinar would be on this subject i can assure you that we will get the best from the industry and uh, then uh, uh, what are the hard work presence of social media i think that uh, friends Uh, we have uh, tried to answer uh, most of your questions uh, some uh, uh, have been uh, you know repetition of the same question so we did not repeat it and uh, it has been a great uh, session and uh, i believe that you know uh, you uh, all of you uh, have taken active interest in this uh, 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 actively participated and believe me asking question is something that is so critical to journalism Uh, today people have stopped asking questions it is important that you ask questions the only thing is that those questions should have some thought gone into it uh, not just because you feel like asking a question because actually you genuinely feel that you need an answer for that and that is where you know i think that you need to do a lot of homework uh, you know uh, everybody a journalist has to do a lot of homework before he asks a question otherwise he would be really embarrassed so my uh, advice to all of you who are planning a career in journalism is that you know please remember there will always be forget this uh, job slow down uh, and all that stuff that is temporary uh, let me assure you that the future is bright uh, because please remember that people are all now hooked on to this stuff the mobile phone and they need constant content and people are using videos like anything people are using short text like anything they want every information available under the sun earlier i would know only about what is happening in america today i want to know somebody i say i am from allahabad so i would like to know what is happening in allahabad so i am from ambala i would like to know what is happening in ambala so you will have journalists sitting in ambala sitting in allahabad who will be doing this so what is going to be in spite of all technologies it is it is and it will always be content that will be the king that will be the queen that will be the prince and that will be the princess you know so how good content you can prepare how you can tell beautiful stories at the end of the day it is uh, your ability to tell stories that will attract you you know you uh, why do you switch off a tv channel why do you uh, you know uh, change your television channel you change your channel only because you are not attracted i mean the the person who is telling you something does not attract you the moment you feel attracted you stop there you want to listen to him you want to see what he is showing so i think that much would depend on your ability to articulate your ability to generate fresh content there is so much of information floating around you know i keep saying that i mean there are so many uh, places in and around you we are an ancient country we have monuments like in in the united states a 200 uh, year old building would be considered an ancient monument but in my country uh, 200 500 uh, year old monuments are there in almost every locality say in a place like delhi you know we have had a checkered history so many layers of cities from shahjahanabad to siri to you name it they have all been here and to new delhi lutians delhi they have all been here so there are monuments all over how many people know about it i often ask delhiites that you know in in pahadganj we don't have a pahad in dariaganj we don't have a dari you know so why i mean have you ever thought about it uh, you know 
So I, I think we need to know. There, there is a need to know. Uh, so that is where your content will come, you know, the local recipes, the local folk stories, the local, you know, uh, that is, that people are now interested in that, you know, what the common people would like to know. Today, it's no more the city-based person who is interested in information. The person in the village is interested. The person in the rural area is interested. So have you got stuff? Today, you have got many people working in the rural areas, bringing out beautiful stories from there. You have a lot of people now, majority of channels have now gone regional. They are now talking about, you know, language press, uh, you know, um, so language press is thriving. So suppose you have a mother tongue, so you may be speaking in English and Hindi. So if you have a mother tongue, please, you know, um, uh, articulate yourself. Uh, believe me, you have a lot of people in your mother tongue who would be willing to listen to you. Many of the anchors uh, who are today in Hindi channels had their education in uh, English, uh, you know, English medium schools, but they shifted to, uh, you know, Hindi channels because they felt that their career is there. So that's going to be the future of language channels. So again, you know, so you need to really uh, reinvent yourself constantly. It is something that that's going to be. Uh, so you, I, I look at it very optimistically. I look at a great demand for content and you have to know how to develop content. And that's what we are going to teach you in terms of technology, in terms of creativity. You know, that's what I look forward to, you know, many of you uh, being uh, our students in the coming days. I mean, this is just the be beginning. You have seen in the last webinar, we had uh, online entrepreneurs like Rohit Gandhi and um, Mr. Alok Verma. They have already uh, offered, uh, you know, uh, jobs for, for our students. I, I believe that, you know, uh, there are going to be many more such opportunities. On that note, uh, uh, once again, thank you for being part of us. And we can assure you, please watch this space. You are going to have more eminent people coming to address you. Thank you so much. Take care. Stay safe. Bye.